The 280 Ackley improved cartridge is obtained by fireforming the standard 280 Remington cartridge in the improved chamber. The improved chamber is larger in diameter at the shoulder and instead of having the long sloping shoulder of the 280 Remington case, it has a sharper Ackley signature 40 degree shoulder. When this round is fired in this chamber, it comes out looking like this. But what we're working with right now is formed brass uh, that's available directly from Nosler. At our range shooting sessions, we've demonstrated how much the shoulder is collapsed by the impact of the firing pin when you fire a cartridge. And it got us to wondering uh, what actually happens with the sharper shoulder of the Ackley Improved type cartridge. Now in theory it looks like it's going to be a stronger structure than what the long sloping shoulder of a, a 308 Winchester case would be for an example or the 35 Whalen that we've worked with. So let's see what actually happens when we pop a primer with different cases in this 7 millimeter 08 barrel that I've rechambered to 280 Ackley Improved. Let's see what happens. Before I <coughs> rechambered this barrel, I had to find out what the barrel to frame gap measurement was, and it was five thousandths. So I've stamped a five on the bottom of the barrel for my own reference. Now, for your barrels, when you mate them to a frame, I would recommend that you take the barrel to frame gap measurement and make a notation on the bottom of the lug yourself for future reference. This will make it easier when it's time for you to adjust your size dies or compare factory ammo, uh, the headspace that's produced with it compared to your barrel to frame gap measurement. And also, over a period of time, if you find, for an example, that if you double check to verify this, this gap that you find on your frame it's become larger than what you've marked on it originally it would indicate that the barrel itself is loosening or the frame is stretching one of the two so for reference mark your barrel to frame gap on the bottom of the lug notice that I've taken the extractor out of the barrel and this is so that the cartridge will stay in the exact same position that it was in after the firing pin has driven it forward in the chamber. So we'll get an accurate representation of what actually occurs at the instant that that primer is struck and at the split instant before the powder would burn if we were actually firing a live round. This is a new primed nozzler case that comes preformed with the 40 degree shoulder, the Ackley Improved shoulder. Let's see how much it protrudes from the end of the barrel. There we are at eight thousandths. Now let's pop that primer and see just how far the firing pin actually drives it into the chamber. Okay, let's see how far that case has actually been driven in, if any. If anything, it's only been driven forward maybe a half a thousandth to possibly one thousandth at the most, which shows a very, very strong uh, shoulder, far less prone to collapsing than the shallow shoulders on the 308 Winchester and the 35 Whalen. For those of you that are working with the Ackley Improved Rimless Cartridges, or those who might, there's something I want to point out to you. Uh, maybe I should address this also at the gunsmiths who like to set up for the Ackley cartridges. They require a shorter chamber than standard. One of the reasons for this is that your forward stopping point is the next shoulder junction of the case. I'm going to ink this and we'll put it in the chamber. I want, want to show where it actually makes contact when it's pushed forward in the chamber. I'm just pushing it in just with finger pressure. Now that's nothing like a firing pin strike. See this bright mark right here where the ink has been marred? That is your forward stopping point. When it's fire formed, 
to the 40 degree shoulder it'll look like this. You can see that the bottom edge of the shoulder is moved forward in the 40 degree and that the neck shoulder junction of the improved fireform case corresponds with this point right here. It's just simply opened up the case like an umbrella. I'm going to go pull the bullet now and dump the powder charge so that all, all that we will have will just be the primed case. We're going to fire just a primer and I want to show you just how much that shoulder collapses. We're going to measure how far this case sticks out of the barrel. This is the one I just pulled the bullet on. There it is. It's protruding from the end of the barrel nine thousandths. Firing just a primer alone on this empty 280 Remington case in the improved chamber. Wow, look at that. You can tell right away that that's well down below the end of the barrel. Let's see just how far it was shoved down there by the firing pin. Man, look at that. Six thousandths. That's six thousandths below the end of the barrel. It started out nine thousandths above the end of the barrel. That's a total collapse at the shoulder of fifteen thousandths. So that case, when it's reloaded, and fired at normal pressure is going to stretch about fifteen thousandths. That's a lot of a lot of stretch on that case. You can see how the chamber has actually pushed the shoulder of the case back a little bit when the firing pin drove it in. You can see it's kind of rounded right here. It's actually shoved it back. Now remember our barrel to frame gap is five thousandths. This cartridge case initially was sticking out nine thousandths. So that means that when we close the frame, we've actually crammed that case in four thousandths. That, that's the mechanical side of it. It was after firing the primer only, then six thousandths below the end of the barrel. So when this cartridge is reloaded to full normal pressure, it has, it has the potential to stretch six thousandths from down below where it was, back to the end of the barrel, plus five thousandths back to the firing pin bushing. It will have a total stretch of eleven thousandths when it's fired at normal pressure.